from the surface to this ice capade. These are four-story buildings, and this is like, I don't know what, 20, 30, something. You know, it's that. Whatever. Ladies' rooms. Also, if everyone could please turn off or put their cell phones on uh, vibrate so that everybody can be heard. This particular hearing is an insult to the intelligence of anybody that's for it or against it. We will now begin the public comment portion of this hearing. The procedures to be followed are as follows. If you wish to speak at today's hearing and you haven't already done so, please register at the tables outside this auditorium. Now when you register, it would be helpful, although you do not have to, indicate whether you're for or against the project. This way we can try to evenly distribute the speakers so we don't have 100 speakers on one side and then start with speakers on another side. Public officials will be allowed to speak as soon as possible after their arrival at the hearing room. In all other instances, because they're public speaker, because they're public representatives, again, public officials, public officials, regardless of which side of the aisle they're on, will be permitted to speak earlier because they are elected officials and that is how these procedures work. This is supposed to be a public hearing to discuss all the environmental impacts. Not a rah-rah Bruce Ratner and not a rah-rah whoever. And they're talking about things that are not even going to happen. I know, and very few people are talking about the environment. And very few people know that Bruce Ratner happens to be exempt from any city zoning or environmental regulation. Like he doesn't have to plant the tree. He is exempt from all of this because Empire State, you know, George Pataki's best friend, is running the show. Good evening, my name is Marty Golden. I am a state senator that represents Brooklyn. I've been in a city council me. for five years excuse before. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, Senator Golden. Ma'am. Could security please remove that person? That whole hearing is a slap in the face of people that think it's supposed to be on environmental issues. Too much water, too much pollution, too high, too shadows, too whatever. Nothing to do with anything else. The Public Authority Control Board must refuse to accept any final environmental impact study that fails to address these profound community supplied concerns. 9-11 and Katrina remind us it is immoral to play roulette with public safety. First responders will die. So Time for the record, up. I am opposed to this project. I am not opposed to I am not opposed to Time development. I am not opposed to development. Is security in the building? Here they come. Security, could you please remove that person? These people in there don't know. They think they're going to have affordable housing. Well, their affordable housing is going to be in Brownsville. Because he bought St. Mary's Hospital. The affordable housing here is going to be like 225 apartments and your lowest income is $35,000 for family of four. I'm an attorney at South Brooklyn Legal Services. We've been giving free legal representation to people living at 125% of the federal poverty line or lower for over 30 years. We represent 12 families living inside the project footprint. That's 31 people. And what does the project plan provide for them? It provides that they're going to get needs assessments, broker's fees, and moving expenses. 
What doesn't it provide? It doesn't provide, it doesn't guarantee that they're going to get an affordable replacement apartment in the neighborhood. And do you know what this sounds like to me? It sounds to me like a one-way ticket out of town. And that is, in fact, what it is, because the ESDC itself estimates that this project has the potential to displace over 3,000 people. Number one, reduce the scale. The Williamsburg Savings Bank should remain Brooklyn's tallest building, meaning that the height of Miss Brooklyn on Site 5, the current piece of Richard store, must be reduced. Number two, Along with that, the building that faces Newswalk Building must be reduced. And the building that faces Prospect Heights must be reduced. Next, build a school. Get real about traffic and parking. I drive these streets myself every day. I understand the issues firsthand. Anybody want to say anything? You want to say anything uh, pro or against the stadium for the uh, public access audience? I need a place. You need a place? Yeah. So we want that place to be built for low income. Yeah. How, how low do you think the income is going to be? You think it's going to be for you and me? Yeah. Yeah? You trust these guys? I trust him. You do? Yeah, he usually delivers. So. Okay. Do you go to church? I go to you church. You better pray for that. <laughs> I will. God bless you, dear. Thank you. I agree with what the brothers said earlier. We need jobs. We need housing. Some of us who've been out there in the struggle for these things, we know what the real deal is. But it was me who watched how Mr. Ratner, some of the group, told us and made promises with the Metro Tech. I was one of the ones who received the first gold ballpoint pen where he and Mayor Koch signed to give the tax abatement. I understand the same area that you're talking about, where they were talking about making promises 25 years ago for Baruch College, which never materialized. They tore down over a thousand houses in that same area to make way and it never materialized because Baruch College never came about. They put a parking lot there for the Daily News Company in that same area. Could you please sum up, sir? Okay. Thank you and good night. Because of our strength in representing over 40 community organizations, CBN has been awarded funding, $130,000 from the City Council, thanks, thanks to Speaker Christine Quinn and City Council members uh, Letitia James and Bill de Blasio. We have also received $100,000 in funding from the state, thanks to the support and efforts of Assembly members Roger Green, Joe Millman, and Jim Brennan, among others. Uh, this particular thanks goes to Assembly uh, Speaker Sheldon Silver out of whose budget this money comes. With this money, we have been able to hire experts to review this 4,000 page document that has been given to us approximately 30 days ago by the ESDC. These experts have a vir virtually impossible undertaking given the incredible size of this document and the incredibly short period of time we have been given. Unfortunately, CBN's request for a meaningful opportunity to be heard has fallen on deaf ears. Despite the pleas of Council Speaker Christine Quinn, Elliot Spitzer, Senator Hillary Clinton, Assemblyman Roger Green, and many more, you, the ESDC, have steadfastly denied our request for more than two months to respond to documents that Forest City Ratner has had year, two years to prepare. More troubling, it does not appear that the ESDC is interested in really hearing or considering what the public has to say. Unfortunately, CBN's effort to encourage community participation in this hearing today was intentionally impeded by the ESDC. The CBN emailed written questions to the media spokesperson for the ESDC on Monday morning and again on Tuesday morning, clearly requesting simple information about the ground rules for this hearing. In reply, yesterday at 2.28 p.m., the Director of Communications for Public Affairs for the ESDC sent CBN the following.